poso mau ni wiak wai wanen kitane ni mo e yoski pia taya posnotoman e yom MITW podcast a yospis pia taya posnapi notoman e ne hisikimaka e yoso matna mene hokihi Welcome to the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin podcast. We are your hosts, Gary Dodge. And Sheena Wapus. On this episode, we are joined by Vaughn Bowles, Public Information Officer for the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin. I would like to remind people that we request you send in your COVID-19 related questions to us at podcast.mitw.org. Welcome, Vaughn. Morning, guys. So, Vaughn, we have a lot of questions about the vaccine, as usual. Um, so if you're pregnant, can you get the vaccine? So right now, the CDC is not recommending that pregnant women get the vaccine. Um, however, that said, they are saying that they can if they talk to their healthcare provider and they decide that there is a um, low enough you know, threshold of risk for them, um, they could get it. But they are not endorsing that you know, all pregnant women carte blanche get it currently. What about breastfeeding women? Uh, same for breastfeeding women, yeah. Okay. So if you've already had COVID-19 and recovered, do you still need to get the vaccine? They are recommending that people that have had COVID get the vaccine because they're not sure how long natural immunity and antibody production lasts um, with COVID-19. Um, they've seen studies that, you know, they're ballparking it in the 90-day range right now, which is about three months. Um but they'd, they'd like that antibody level to last longer. So they are still recommending that people uh, get the, uh, the vaccination and stuff, even if they've had it. Can you get the vaccine while you're currently sick with COVID? No. Uh, if you are currently sick with COVID, they recommend you, you know, stay home, stay isolated. Um, you know, because if you do go, you could um, potentially uh, infect your vaccinator. Um, that and your your body's already in a heightened immune response state. Um, COVID, they've found, sometimes triggers immune responses to be overactive and overstimulate, you know, various parts of the body. Um, they call it a cytokine storm. And so they're, they're recommending that you don't challenge the immune system with a vaccine at the same time. Um, and so, no, if you are currently sick with COVID, wait until your symptoms subside before going to be vaccinated. If you have an underlying condition, can you get the vaccine? It depends. Um, it depends on the condition. So um, anyone that's immunocompromised, um, obese, diabetic, has a history of respiratory issues, um, you know, cardiac issues. Those are those are okay for people to be vaccinated. Um, like we said earlier, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding and stuff, currently it's not strongly recommended, um, and it's also not pushed or recommended for individuals under the age of 16 right now. So um, it kind of depends on your situation. One of those things you want to discuss with your doctor. What phase are we currently in for the vaccine distribution locally? Locally, we're in our 1B phase. Um, so we're vaccinating our elders and seniors that are over the age of 55. Um, we're also working on our essential uh, workers group that include you know, anyone working in food service or, or handling food, um, our utility and maintenance workers. Uh, we're working on getting the highway department vaccinated and also the IT department um, vaccinated because they help you know, keep us connected during this whole situation virtually. Who will be the next eligible people for vaccination? So one C, and this is this is still tentative. Um, it's you know still subject to change uh, at the CDC level, the state level, or with incident command. Um, we're looking at again, you know, trying to get anyone who's fifty five or older that that wasn't um, vaccinated during the one B phase. Um, we're also going to be making sure that individuals 18 to 55 with chronic medical conditions um, that we've missed previously are vaccinated. Um, we're looking at uh, vaccinating the tribal administration, the housing departments, the finance departments, the court and justice systems, um, if they haven't received it yet, uh, postal workers, and then casino and MTE workers. Again, that's tentative, um, but it looks like we'll, we'll start moving into that soon, hopefully, weather permitting. Right, can you go over Dr. Sligo's PSA about the uh, non-tribal 
when I'm in a county residence? Yeah. So back when this all started and the, the state declared um, a state of emergency and the tribe declared a state of emergency, um, the Menominee Tribal Clinic um, enrolled to be a COVID vaccinator with uh, the Wisconsin State Department of Health. Um, and that's also the group that we decided we'd receive our vaccines through rather than Indian Health Services because we have a pretty good working relationship with them and we've been able to get supplies fairly quickly through them. Long and the short, what that what that means uh, is that you know we've agreed to vaccinate um, essentially all the permanent residents of Menominee County, um, and so we're now working with the Shano Menominee County Public Health Department uh, to distribute vaccines to non-native uh, residents of the county as well. Um, we've been helping to vaccinate county employees, um, and so. Anyone in those those two demographics that we just talked about, essentially um, elders over the age of 55, if you're a non-tribal member at this point, you can also be vaccinated at the tribal clinic. Um, and we have a phone number you guys can call. We'll put that in the show notes. Who do we report COVID vaccine side effects to? So COVID vaccine side effects uh, should be reported to the CDC. They have a system set up called VAERS. It stands for the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. Um, and you're encouraged to report any sort of significant health problems that occur after vaccination. Um, some of these might be um, shoulder-related injuries uh, after vaccine admission, administration. Um, if you have vasovagal or syncope, um, which basically is a fainting spell uh, caused by a drop in blood pressure, they want you to call it. Um, also, if you have any other type of abnormality, um, you know, they want you to call if you have increased pains, fevers, things like that. Um, they, they want you to report that to your uh, healthcare provider. And if they feel it's, it's an issue, It'll be reported to VAERS. Um, we have the link that we can put in the show notes if you want to uh, report online. Um, there's also a link for a downloadable PDF if you feel more comfortable filling it out by paper. Um, and then there's a phone number you can call. It's 1-800-822-7967. We can also put that in the show notes for you if, if you feel you're having a strong reaction and need to report the symptoms to the CDC. Okay, how much of the population has gotten their vaccine? So far, we vaccinated about uh, 1,800 people, um, which is pretty good. We're also scheduled to receive another 1,000 vaccines in the coming week. So we're pretty hopeful that all goes well and we'll be able to, to move along in vaccinating the community. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, if you're an individual that wants to be vaccinated, um, whether you're a tribal member or not, um, please call the, the Menominee Tribal Clinic at 715-799-5430. Um, you can schedule an appointment if you're you know over 55 or have an underlying health condition, and uh, we'll be happy to help get you vaccinated so we can keep the population in the community healthy. Why Wannon for listening to the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also listen to the podcast on menominee-nsn.gov under the community tab. Keep up to date by following us on Facebook at MITW Podcast. We do weekly updates with Vaughn and welcome any community questions you have regarding COVID-19. Please send them in to us via email at podcast at mitw.org.